Hallelujah. Y'all blessed? Yeah. All right, grab your Bibles, everybody. Let me share some things with you. Say this out loud. This is my Bible. I have what it says I can have. I do what it says I can do. I am what it says I am. Father, in the name of Jesus, I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living, ever-producing seed of the living God. Father, I confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. From this moment forward, I'll never be the same. I'll never, 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 never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Open your Bibles, if you would, to Acts chapter 27. I'm preaching a series of messages on anchors in life. This will be the third message that we talk about. And we use for a text in Acts chapter 27, verse 20. We've used it at all times that I've preached this. We'll have one more message. In Acts chapter 27, verse 20, you see that the Apostle Paul and his crew, they were in a big storm and looked like everything was going to be lost. They hadn't seen the sun or stars for many days. They were going into the 14th day that looked like everything should be lost. And let's pick it up in verse 20. And neither, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was taken away. Look at verse 27. When the fourteenth night was come, as we were driven up and down in Adria, at about midnight, the shipmen deemed that they drew near to some country, and sounded, and found it twenty fathoms. And when they had gone a little further, they sounded again, and found it fifteen fathoms. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon the rocks, they cast out four anchors. Everybody say four anchors. anchors. They cast out four anchors of the stern and wished for the day. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the word of God, and we thank you, Lord, for enlightenment today and strength and encouragement. Father, to overcome the storms in life. We give you the praise and the honor and the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We've been sharing with you from the book of Acts and talking and using as a text, once again, the four anchors and talking about the anchors in life. If you're going through life, and we all are, there will be times in our lives when we encounter storms. Those storms can come to all of us differently. They might be physical Uh, symptoms in your body. It might be financial. It might be relationships. You can list the storms that come to each and every one of us, the challenges that come. And we've talked about how we can anchor during those storms so that we survive and we don't become shipwrecked in life. The first anchor that we talked about, of course, was being born again. If you're going to anchor in this life, you need to be born again. You've got to have the Spirit of God living with inside of you, knowing that you have made a determination that heaven is going to be eternity for you and not hell. And when you're born again, then the Spirit of God moves on the inside of you, and you're a new creation. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, If any person is in Christ, they're a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And I don't know about you, but that's a big weight that's taken off of our shoulders. All of that sin consciousness, all of the lifestyle that we used to live before we met Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Oh, what a burden is removed, praise God, that I've got born again and no, God is not judging me, that I've judged myself and I'm born again and I'm on my way to heaven and heaven is going to be great, but I need steak on my plate while I wait. And so then I pray for another outpouring of the Spirit of God, praise God. And then I get to the point where I just want more of Him and more of Him and more of Him. And the second work of grace of the Holy Ghost is being baptized in the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. You're not going to speak in other tongues when you get to heaven. You need that endowment now so that you can pray and get direction and strength from God. And, and, and the witness of the Holy Spirit on the inside of you will give you revelation, knowledge, and direction and encouragement. The Bible says that when you get weak in your faith, if you pray in other tongues, you build up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. I compare it like this, that, that in this natural realm, we are natural human beings, and we're like Clark Kent. 
We're, we're that mild-mannered reporter just going through life, and we got our dark rim glasses on and our little hat, and we're just going and reporting the daily events that are going on. But then the challenges come, the tests come, the problems come, and it's time for me to go into my phone booth, praise God. And I pray in tongues a little while, and no longer am I a mere-mannered man, but I come out supercharged, praise God, full of the power of God. Amen. I'm no longer a mere man, but I'm Superman, praise God. Full of the Holy Ghost and full of power. Glory to God, ready to go out and take the, the world by the horn and just cast it down at my feet, praise God. I come out of that phone booth just all charged up. I'm ready to swing out over hell like a, 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 with a grapevine and just spit in the devil's eye. And I feel like nothing's going to take me down, praise God. The third thing that I want to talk to you about today after you're born again and you're filled with the Holy Spirit and established in that. The third thing that I want to talk to you about today is you've got to be anchored in the Word of God. Word of God has to be final authority in your life. And that's what Pastor Dorothy and I set out to do. We wanted to learn this book. If I'm going to be a Christian and, and we're going to follow the things of God and I'm going to imitate God and I'm going to be a godly person, then I want to live according to this book. I don't want to just go to church on Sunday and walk out and act like the rest of the world. I want to be different. I want to be godly, not just in church, but when I'm out on the job and when trust and, uh, tr trials and tests come to me. When you know, you're going down the interstate and somebody cuts you off and then they call you number one. I don't want to react like the world does and pull out my gun and, and start getting in a dispute with them. I want to pray for them. I want to be a godly man. Amen. Amen. And I believe that that's the way we establish ourselves is by anchoring in the Word of God. I said anchoring in the Word of God. Establish the Word of God. In uh, Psalm uh, chapter uh, uh, um, 138, verse 2, God says, I exalt my Word above my name. I exalt my Word above my name. So, you know, when we were going to the church and we were getting into the Word of God and we were establishing our lives on the Word of God, pastor actually called us into the office. And he said, now don't get so far over there into the Word of God. Don't get so far in the Word that you lose sight of God. As a pastor, the Bible says in John 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with Him and all things were created by Him. And in him was light, and that light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. God is his word. You can't separate God from his word. The more I learn the word, the more I know about God. Yeah. Woo! That's a theologian talking to you right there. Don't get so far over into the Bible. No, the Bible is the word of God. The Bible is what I need to pattern my life after, praise God. You've got to see something about Jesus. Turn over to Mark's gospel, or Luke's gospel, Luke chapter 24. I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but in verse 44. Now this is Jesus. This is written in red. Look at verse 44. He said this, These are the words which I spoke unto you, which I was yet with you. Now watch this, that all things must be fulfilled which were written. Are you listening to me? Everything that is in this book will be fulfilled. Jesus preached that. Jesus didn't come and set people down and just talking to them about a bunch of nonsense. He talked to them about the Word of God. He said, everything that is in the Word, in the Law of Moses and the Prophets and the Psalms concerning me will be fulfilled. Amen. Glory to God. So everything in this book is true. I had a, a, a person ask me a few weeks ago, he said, so you take the word of God literally? I, you don't? Don't act like I'm a weirdo. God, if you don't take the word of God literally, what are you basing your faith upon? What are you basing your Christianity upon? What are you basing your life upon? This word is alive and it's true. Glory to God. Are you listening to me? Yeah. Oh, Hallelujah. Look at what else Jesus said. Look at verse 45. Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the Scripture. Guys, if you understand this word, it's because the Holy Spirit has opened your eyes. You couldn't understand it, but you got born again. You see, the Word of God is foolishness to them that don't believe. 
It's foolishness to worldly people. But when your eyes got opened, oh, hallelujah, you saw some things that nobody else could see. You hear things nobody else can hear. Even religious people want to know what you know and have what you have, but they don't get it because their eyes haven't been opened. And you know what? If the Holy Spirit doesn't open your eyes to it, you're going to sit here and say, I wonder what he's talking about. I don't understand. I don't get it. No, you got to pray that the Lord opens your eyes to it. Praise God. Hallelujah. He said then in verse 46, thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. He was preaching to them about what he saw of himself in Scripture. Can I have an amen? amen? You see, he preached the word of God. He said in Matthew chapter 16, verse 13, he said, it's on the revelation of the word that I'm going to build my church. If you're going to be a part of the church, then you've got to be built up. And it's the revelation knowledge of the word of God that's going to build you up. Glory to God. Establish your life on the word of God. God draws you. Amen. Amen. Matthew 13, 16 says that you're blessed because you see what you see and have what you have and know what you know. Hallelujah. In the book of Hebrews, it says this. It says all scripture. Everybody say all scripture. No, that's 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, and correction in righteousness. All scripture, all scripture. You see, you can't go by visions and dreams and, and things if it doesn't line up with the word of God. There was a time when the Holy Spirit uh, descended down upon Jesus and and the people were standing around when Jesus was baptized. And, and, and the, the voice of God spoke and said, this is my son. And they, then those that were standing around said, I, I hear thunder. I hear thunder. It wasn't thunder. It was the voice of God. But they didn't know it. Amen. But you see, then there was a time when Peter said, I was there when he spoke from heaven. I was there when, when, when the glory of God was on that mount. But he said this. He said, you have a more sure word of prophecy than those visions that I saw. And that's the word of God right there in your lap. It's the word of God. I'll never forget the day that I saw in the Bible that by his stripes healing belonged to me. Oh, glory to God. Yeah, but you've got to fight for that. Oh, he said he would supply all my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Oh, glory to God. I found out that tithing is for today. I found out that giving is for today. I didn't understand it, but that's how I'm going to get my uh, financial stability. In the ups and downs of society and the economy, my stability is in the Word of God because I'm established upon the Word of God. Can I have an amen? amen? I tell you, when you establish yourself on the Word of God, you've got confidence. I'll never forget when I was going to Ramah, I was going through some hard times financially trying to make the tuition and trying to feed my kids and trying to take care of a family. And I was tithing and I was giving. And like Pastor said, I was only making $3.83 an hour, going to Ramah, supporting a family of four. And I was struggling. And I had a friend that was a second year student. I'm in my first year. And I'm learning these principles. And I'm basing my life upon these principles. Guys, that doesn't mean it was easy. It's not easy when you've got kids that are hungry and they, and they want some food and, and God's saying, I need you to give me the $60 of your $600 paycheck. That $60 could have bought a lot of food. No, I'm establishing my life on the word of God. I'm not taking God's money. He's getting his $60. Amen. And we believe for food. And I remember I went to Joe and I said, Joe, I said, man, this is, I'm struggling. I said, this isn't working for me. I said, we've got, we don't have any food. Uh, we're barely getting along. And he said, I'll meet you on break time. We work together. He said, I'll meet you at break time. I'll meet you and we'll have a cup of coffee. Bring your Bible. So we went to a break a room and we sat down and, and, and I opened my Bible where he said, he said, open to Malachi chapter three. And he read the scripture to me. Bring all your tithes into the storehouse and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will not... Uh, open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shouldn't have room enough to receive it. And he said, are you doing that? I said, yes, I'm a tither. He closed his Bible, got up and walked out of the room and left me there. And he turned around and he said, you don't have a problem then. 
I thought maybe he was going to give me some money. No, that's not going to help you. That's a temporary fix. That's a band-aid. But if you get that word of God down on the inside of you, then you're able to stand and say, God, I'm doing my part. You said to prove you, and I'm proving it, and this has got to work. If this doesn't work in Malachi, then how do I know that my wife is not going to die and she's going to live and be healed? It all has to work. How do I know that if this doesn't work, how do I know that you're going to raise me up from the dead in the last day should not, I, I live in, and the rapture not occur? It all has to work. I said it all has to work. I said it all has to work. It all, every part of this word has to work. You supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. By Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Turn over to Mark chapter 4. Anchor yourself into the word of God. Amen. Now the problem is some people come to church and they hear the word of God and they, they try it for a while, but then they let it go to sleep. Hallelujah. And that's not the way that it works. I said, you've got to wake it up. I said, you've got to wake it up. You've got to wake it up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, in Mark chapter 4, Jesus sat with the disciples. Uh, beginning, you read it. We don't have time to read the whole thing. But he taught them about how the kingdom of God works. It's like a seed. And then he explained to him the seed. And he explained to him about life, that when the seed is planted, the storms of this life come to take the seed. You see, the devil was trying to steal that seed from me, to get tithing out of me, to get giving out of me, because my kids were hungry and we didn't have any food. He was trying to get me to compromise the word of God. He was trying to get me to bow down. He was trying to steal that seed out of me, that revelation knowledge that I had received. He's trying to get that from you. By his stripes I'm healed. He's trying to put pressure on you. The devil's trying to put pain in your body and make you sick to get you to doubt that God's still a healer today. Because you, you get looking at the body, you get feeling the pain, and you're thinking, God, if, if your word is true, then why am I going through this? No, you see, that's what I did with Joe. And he said, you don't have a problem as long as you stick with the word. Stick with the word of God and you'll come through it. Pastor Dorothy stuck with the word of God for years and she came through it. Now you should hear her, uh, I don't know why I can't lose weight now. Uh, yeah, that's what we're talking about in our house. We've got to get rid of some of this extra weight. Thank God we're overcomers. Amen. We got up, now we'll come down. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is so good. But he was explaining to the disciples how it all worked. And then, and then what happened? He gave them an assignment. After he taught them, and after we learned in the word of God, we learned about Rhema. We learned about how to go out and establish the kingdom of God. And then we got our assignment. And when we got our assignment, we came here to do what God called us to do. Can I have an amen? amen. And that's what the disciples, we're going to pick it up here. God gave them an assignment. Just stay with me a few more minutes. Look at it in verse uh, 30, where are we looking at? In Mark chapter 4, verse 35. The same day when the evening was come, he said unto them, let us pass over to the other side. God wants you all to pass over. Whatever you're going through, he wants you to pass over. You got an assignment. Amen. Look at verse 36. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him. Even as he was in the ship, Pastor Dorothy and I left Raymond and we brought the Lord with us. We came here to Mustang. Amen. We took him with us. And there was also with him other little ships. Look at verse 37. And there arose a great storm of wind. <laughs> well, didn't the Lord tell me to go and do this? Yeah, but he didn't tell me it was going to be calm water. If he told me there was going to be a storm, I might not have come. If he told you there was going to be a storm, you might not be in this church. But I'm telling I'm teaching you more stuff than, that, that'll get you in more trouble than you've ever thought of. Amen. I'm teaching you about things that will cause the storms to come against you. Amen. But listen to this. This is where you overcome. 
by establishing yourself in the Word of God. The Word of God is true, and take your stand. Having done all to stand, stand therefore. Have your loins girt about with truth. Have on the breastplate of righteousness. Having on the helmet of salvation and shoes. Uh, feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace and take the sword of the spirit which is the word of God and slice the devil up. Amen. Glory to God. Don't bow down to him. Amen. Now watch this. The thing that happened is they took Jesus with them in the ship and then he went to sleep. You see many of you took the word of God and got it into your heart but then when the storm came you let it sleep. I said, you let it sleep. You're not allowing it to work in your life. You cannot have a sleepy word. Jesus is the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God. The same in the beginning was with God and is God. And so the word is alive inside of you, but many of you let it sleep. When the storm comes, you've got to wake up the word. Wake it up. I said, wake it up. Put it active. You've got to have an activator. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Buddy has a paint and body shop, and he can spray that paint on there and spray that clear coat on there. But if you don't put the activator on there, it's not going to work. Am I right or wrong? You've got to have the activator. You've got to have the activator. You can have the Word of God in your heart. You can hear it over and over and over again. And you hear these stories over and over and over again. But does it do you any good? Oh, glory to God. Look at what happened in verse 38. He was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. And they awake him, and they said unto him, Master, don't you care? He just told them how the whole kingdom of God worked. He sat there and told them there's persecution and tests that arise for the word's sake. It's after the word of God. The devil's not after you. He's after the word that's in you. He's after that revelation knowledge that you said you had. He's going to test you. You better be careful what you say. As soon as you give testimony, get ready. Did you notice that after the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea, it was only a couple days later and they ran into more trouble? You see, when you give testimony and you overcome, the devil's going to challenge you. Oh, did you really get it? Did you really get it? I watched a, a little video yesterday of Oral Roberts back in 1958. And he's trying to tell people about how to, to apply your faith and get your faith working, get it activated, and then to hang on to what you get after you receive it. Many people lose it at the counterattack. The counterattack sometimes can be worse than the first attack. Amen. He said to wake up. And Jesus woke up. He said, they said, don't you care? He cared so much that he just taught them the whole principle of how the kingdom of God worked. And if they would have paid attention to that, instead of paying attention to the storm, if they would have just done what he told them to do, they would have overcome. And so will you. But watch this. They said, don't you care? In verse 39, he arose and he rebuked the wind. And he said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. You stand upon the word of God. The Bible says that the way we release our faith is something that we need to practice. The way that we release our faith is, you know, I, I have faith. Well, yeah, you have faith. And Oral said, I heard him say this yesterday on the video I was watching. He said, that's the problem. You still have it. You still have it. You haven't learned to release it. You release your faith by the words that you say. You release your faith by the words that you say. Now, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about opening your Bible and, and, and quote and say, by Jesus' stripes I'm healed. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that when we dismiss church or when we're here in the fellowship hall, or when we go to lunch with one another, and we're sitting down there, and you say, will you, will you pass me the butter? By the way, I don't feel good. That's what I'm talking about. You just lose your healing because 
of what you're talking about. You didn't believe what you said in the first place. You don't believe by Jesus stripes you're healed or you wouldn't be talking about, I'm in so much pain. Amen. No, you're not supposed to be talking about, whose report are you going to believe? Yeah, your body is in pain, but I believe by his stripes I'm healed. Amen. I believe by his stripes I'm healed. 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 Amen. Now, if you take me out to lunch, don't sit across the table from me and ask me how I feel. You're liable to get embarrassed. I'm not going to tell you how I feel. I learned that from Smith Wigglesworth. Now, I never sat with him, but I read his books. Smith Wigglesworth said this. He said, I never ask Smith how he feels. Why? Because you're going to feel different today than you did yesterday. You know, we're fickle. You all mad at me so far? I'm talking about releasing your faith and keeping it out there. You know, I, I, I was raised uh, as a, a sportsman. We hunted all the time. And there was one thing that I, I learned about shooting a rifle or a shotgun or a pistol or whatever. Once you pull the trigger, you can't pull that bullet back in. It's released and it's out there. Once you release your faith, by his stripes I'm healed. Last week, uh, uh, Dean Tad laid his hands on a couple of people. And, and you know what? That's where your faith was released. Don't pull the gun back. Don't pull a bullet back in and say, well, I guess it didn't work. No, it worked. It worked. The laying on of hands. The Bible says, if you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. He laid hands on you, bless God. And that's when your faith released and keep it released. Amen. Karen's not here and her, she got prayed for for her back. Are y'all listening to me? Y'all better stand up. I could just go on and on. I'm going to quit. Yeah, but pastor, if the word of God is true, then why am I having financial trouble? Well, if the word of God is true, why am I physically under so much attack? Well, if the word of God is true, why am I depressed? Well, if the word of God is true, why are these problems happening to me? Have you anchored yourself in the word of God? I remember Pastor Dorothy for years and years and years and years. And even to this day, she's, she still says it. She was on drugs for uh, depression years ago. She was losing weight, told she was going to die. And then God gave her a scripture and he said, you're my happy child. She said, I'm not happy, I'm depressed. Are you serious? No, you got to release your faith. And she would say, I'm God's happy child. 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 So if you're ever walking by Pastor Dorothy and she looks at you and says, I'm God's happy child, you know she's under attack. <laughs> amen. I said, amen. 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 For years and years and years. I think about seven years. I said about seven years. Hallelujah. You've got to stick with it, guys. You've got to stay with it. Stay with it. And you know that crazy devil tries to come back. Amen. He tries to come back and bring seven more stronger than he was the first time. I remember one of the things Pastor had to get rid of. I, liked it. I like her testimony. She, the, she got born again January 3rd, 1981. And January the 4th, she decided that the Lord wanted her to give up cigarettes. And so she gave up cigarettes. Every time she was tempted, she got the Word of God, started reading the Word of God. Well, she, she lived with, I mean, she had a Bible carried around with her all the time. But we were here, this was 1981, she gave it up. And I, I'm going to say this was probably 1997 or 98, I'm just guessing at the year, but it was several years later. She woke up one morning. She says, I had a dream last night. There was a great big cigarette chasing me down the street, wanting me to smoke it. <laughs> Twenty-some years later. Hey, he just wanted to see where she was. He just wanted to see where she was. About two years ago, I was having an issue with my back. Uh, maybe three years ago now. And we went to Branson on a vacation and we had to cut the vacation short because I couldn't move. Pastor had to get me up out of the bed. I drove back and, and uh, I told Pastor, I said, I'm in so much pain, Dorothy. 
I am in so much pain. I'm believing God. I can't sit. I can't walk. I can't lay. I can't drive. I can't do anything. And I mean, it was so excruciating. And they've got wineries there in Branson. I said, take me to the wine store and get me some wine. She said, Craig, you haven't had a drink since 1981 when you gave it up. I said, I know, but I'm in so much pain. She said, Craig, the devil's talking to you, trying to get you to drink again. I said, oh, yeah, but I'm in so much pain. She said, you sure you want to do this? I'll go. I said, no, no, I'm not compromising. I'm not compromising. I'm not drinking alcohol ever again. Glory to God. And even when I went to my dad's funeral and I went to the Catholic church, you know, the communion is real wine. I wouldn't drink their wine. I'm not drinking your alcohol in your church. I'm not going to compromise. Am I right, Sonny? It's alcohol. In the Lutheran church, it's alcohol. I'm not drinking your wine. I'm not putting alcohol across my lips ever again. If I want some wine, I'm going to drink of the Holy Ghost. He's the new wine. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for the new wine that keeps me happy all the time. And that's the power of the living God through the Holy Spirit. And Father, today I'm going to anchor myself in the Word of God, establish the Word of God to be truth in my life. If you receive this message, say amen. amen. You're dismissed, guys, and we will see you Tuesday for prayer.